Story time about how everyone thought I was a psychopath in school. So once I was friend with this girl named Nola. When I first joined high school, Nola was my only friend. She showed me around school and even helped me with homework. But considering how nice Nola was, she didn't have any friends except me. Nola was one of the nicest people I've ever met, so it was weird for her not to have any other friends. But I just brushed it off and didn't think about it. A month passes of me being friends with Nola, and one day in class, a girl comes up to me and asks me why I'm friends with the weird kid. I started defending Nola, and then the girl went back to her seat and started whispering to her friend. I got suspicious of why they asked me that. I got suspicious of why they said that, so I went and asked Nola. Nola, why did that girl just ask me why I'm friends with you? Do both of you have B for something? Then Nola looks at me in the weirdest way and says no. I just said okay and went on with my day, but I was still really suspicious. Weeks pass by and Nola tells me that she wants to hang out. So I invite her over at my house. So she came and we started playing around and she decided to go into my brother's room. And all I hear her say is EW! I follow her upstairs and just see her staring down the window. She was looking at a dead baby pigeon. And since a lot of birds do nest there, it was because so why no one's friends with down him. and sees a dead baby pigeon. And since a lot of birds do their nests here, it was normal for a baby pigeon to fall off and die. So I explained to Nola the situation and how the baby just fell, and she just said okay. When I show up the next day at school, everyone was giving me deathly stares. So I go up to a girl and ask her what happened, and she responded with, How dare you kill a baby pigeon, you monster! I looked at her in the most frustrated way, knowing that everyone thinks I'm a psychopath now, and it's all because of Nola. This is why no one's friends with her. Story time of how my best friend got so weirdly obsessed with me that she even plotted to kill my boyfriend. So at the time, me and this girl, let's just call her Olivia, had only been friends for about two years. I mean, we really did everything together, we were with each other 24-7, and I mean, we were pretty good friends. But the only thing about our friendship is she did not like when I had other friends. I mean, she didn't have any other friends herself. But literally, she would joke around about strangling my other friends because she didn't like when I gave my attention to anyone else. But honestly, I just thought of it as a joke. And then I started dating this guy, let's just name him Jacob. He was probably the sweetest guy I had ever met, and he was a real simp for me. So we start dating, and about four or five months go by, and he started getting these texts from a random number. And it would always be cringy things like, leave her or you die, get away from her, and like stupid cringy threats. Then one night, me and him were just hanging out. Then he gets a text with his exact address saying he had till tonight to leave me or he wouldn't see another day. Then we hear a knock at the door. I'm running out of time like for part two. Part two of how my best friend got so weirdly obsessed with me that she plotted to kill my boyfriend. So continuing on with the story, we heard a knock at the door and it ended up being her. And she said, oh, I'm just coming by to check on you and make sure you're okay. Mind you, we were at his house. And he looks at me like, um, what is she doing here? So I asked her to leave, and then she ends up getting so mad at me just because I asked her to give us alone time. So the night goes on, and then when I get home, she's in my room. At this time, my whole entire family was out of town, and I was the only one home. So I was like, oh, um, hey. It was literally just like a normal night, and then I go to shower, and when I get back out of the shower, she's gone. And then my boyfriend calls me, and he goes, why is Maddie here? She had, like, this black mask on, but she's stupid enough to not realize that we know it's her. And I mean, we're being real here. She was my best friend at the time. So of course he's not going to call the police on her. But she had a knife in her hand. And he opens the door and he like pins her against the wall. And then calls 911, I guess. And then to sum it up, when they get there, she tells them everything that she was going to do. And then they put her in a mental hospital. But she said that she was going to murder everybody that gets close. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. I'll go first. Two years ago, I was walking my dog at the park and a man approached me and asked to take a picture of her. And I said yes, because... Why not? It's a picture of a dog. So he starts taking a picture of my dog, and then I realized that he was, like, holding up her collar, and then it hit me. My address is on that collar. He's not taking a picture of my dog. He's taking a picture of my address. So I told him that I actually didn't feel comfortable with him having, having a picture of my dog, and I asked him to delete it. So he deletes it, and then, like, starts walking away really fast. And I was like, excuse me, sir, no, could you also go into your deleted album and delete it from there? And he goes... I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, mm, you have an iPhone. Everybody has a deleted album. Could you please delete the picture? And he was like, sorry, I don't have a deleted album. And like keeps walking away. And keep in mind, this is like two in the afternoon in a park. Like there's other people around. So now I'm like chasing after him and I'm telling him, sir, I know you have the album. I will show you where the album is. Can you please go onto your phone so that we can delete the picture? Oh, part two. 
Part two, I'm sorry for the delay. Um, so I'm still chasing after him and people at the park are like starting to look at us now because I'm chasing after him and I'm telling him to stop walking. And so he stops and I tell him again to delete the photo from the deleted album and he goes, I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, yes, you do. Everybody does, it'll take 10 seconds. And he goes, fine. And he like goes on his phone, does something for a second. He goes, there, it's gone. And I was like, could I see the deleted album just to make sure it's gone? And he goes, no, you can't look at my phone. And I was like, I don't want to look at your phone. I just want to see the album just to make sure the picture is gone. That's it. And he goes, no, you're not going to look at my phone. And I was like, sir, I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to leave until you show me the album. So please just show me the album so we can be done with this. So he shows me the album. The picture was still there. So I made him delete it in front of my eyes. What if I hadn't noticed that he took a picture of my address? And what if I went home that, that day and, you know, that night when I took my dog out to pee, he was outside waiting for me. I mean... <laughs> Well, there was this one girl in seventh grade, let's call her Lexi. Lexi was a pick-me girl. She was always like, boys are less drama, you know? And Lexi used to sit next to me in class. And I was throwing a Halloween party later this week. I decided to write a list of what we're going to be doing at the party in class while Lexi's sitting next to me. She looks over at my notebook and sees it. And she was like, I'm invited, right? I looked at her and I just didn't say anything because I didn't want to tell her she's not. She got really excited and was like, I'm going to be wearing a devil costume. Actually, no, I want to be the angel. And at the end of class, she told me to send her the location and information on her Instagram. And I remember that Lexi had a lot of spam accounts and accounts she doesn't use. So I decided to send her the information on one of the accounts she doesn't use. Two days later, Lexi sent Two days later, I get a message from Lexi. She sent me a message from one of her real accounts. Then she told me that I forgot to send her the information for the party. I told her that I did send the location, but on her other account and that I didn't know she stopped using it. Lexi didn't believe me, so I sent her a screenshot. Then I told her that since she didn't confirm, she can't come to the party because I had a limit of 20 people. Lexi got really mad and started calling me mean stuff. That I'm rude and forgetful. And then Lexi blocked me not just on Instagram, but on Snapchat and TikTok. Of course, I didn't care and just went on with my day. Fast forward to the next day, which was the day of my party. Things were going great. Me and my friends had an amazing time. But after an hour, I get a phone call from a random number. I didn't answer, number one, because the music was too loud and I was too busy with my friends. Maybe 10 to 15 minutes pass. And that number calls me again. I handed my phone to my friend and let her use part three. Sorry, it took too long. So I handed my phone to my friend and let her answer the phone. She told me that there was a person waiting for me in front of the house. I, of course, didn't want to go outside alone. So I let my friend Jason come out with me. As soon as we arrive to the front of the house, we see Lexi and her mother sitting next to her in her car. I just stood there in disbelief, not knowing what to do. Lexi got out of the car, looked at me and rolled her eyes, then looked at Jason and started talking to him. She was like, hey Jason, do you miss me? Jason, can I come in? And Jason didn't know what to say, but he said yes. And Lexi had the audacity to show up to my party after she blocked me on all of my social media. Lexi stayed with Jason and Jason's friend. I couldn't enjoy my night anymore after that. The next day in school, I told my teacher the story. She moved my story time about this girl who faked being Latina. So there was this girl who went to my school. Let's call her Sarah. Sarah is the queen of lies. In every subject we talk about, Sarah always, and I mean always, comes up with a lie that has to do with her life. Here's an example. What if we're talking about Tom Holland? She'd just come in and say, Oh yeah, Tom Holland is my dad's friend. I met him once. You know, these types of lies. Another one is when she told everyone she's Latina. It was lunchtime in school and we were talking about where we went for the summer. Sarah tells us that she went to Spain and she started telling us on what she did there and says that she's 50% Latina. She also said that she lived in Spain for six years. And if there is any person who lived in Spain for six years, they must know how to speak Spanish. And then my friend Kayla asked her what does good morning mean in Spanish. We all know it's buenos dias. She just And my friend Kayla asked Sarah what does good morning mean in Spanish. And then Sarah looks at us, looks back at her food and said, 
I don't know, I'm still taking Spanish lessons. And we just look at her, that she doesn't even know what good morning means in Spanish. If she had lived in Spain for six years, she would have known what it meant. I don't know how, but that incident has spread around the entire school. Every person that walks past Sarah just says, Buenos dias! Basically teasing her about not knowing what good morning means in Spanish. And then Sarah didn't show up to school for three days after that. And oh boy, we haven't even got into the crazy part. The three days pass and Sarah comes back to school. As soon as she walks into the class, everyone's eyes was on her. She came up, sat in her seat, and this lady showed up to school. So after three days of Sarah not coming to school, she showed up. In a crop top, skinny jeans, fake nails, and fake lashes. <sighs> and her hair was in a bun with edges. Yes, you heard me, edges. This lady is white. And in lunchtime, she took out a bag of hot Cheetos and some dipping sauce. I don't know if this was supposed to make us think she's Latina, but trust me, it didn't work. All of the freshmen and sophomores took out their phone and started filming her. This is where I kind of felt bad, but she ran to the bathroom crying. And she just stayed there and didn't show up to any classes for the rest of the day.